Computers do maths using only zeros and ones. So in this video, we'll explore the basic operations we can do with these numbers, and how to make the corresponding circuitry. You might remember from our previous video that binary is a number system, where instead of the familiar Arabic numerals from 0 to 9, we only use the digits 0 and 1. Here you can see what it looks like to count up to 32. An easy way to convert a binary number into a normal decimal number is to notice that each position corresponds to a power of 2. If the digits are 1, we add the power of 2. If it's a 0, we ignore it. We are already used to addition in our normal decimal system, but how do we add in binary? To figure that out, let's do a quick review of normal addition. When we have two numbers, we can line them up above each other like this. Look at the rightmost digits and add those two digits by simply having remembered the outcome for them. In a lot of cases, we can add the numbers without any problems, but sometimes our outcome for this calculation is two digits wide instead of just one. In this case, we add a carry, meaning that for our next digit, we add three numbers together rather than just two. We can continue this process for as long as we need to calculate the sum of any two numbers. So let's now try to do the same algorithm in binary. Let's first figure out how to add basic one digit numbers, which is pretty simple because we don't have that many options. 0 plus 0 equals 0, 1 plus 0 and 0 plus 1 both equal 1, and finally 1 plus 1 does not equal 2, because that doesn't exist here, instead it equals 1, 0. Let's now try to add two longer numbers. In the rightmost position, we have a 1 plus a 0, which is 1, and a 0 plus a 0, which is 0. Here 1 plus 1, which is 1, 0, so we put a 0 here and add a carry. Here it might get confusing because I have three ones added together, but don't worry, it's not that complicated. Adding the first two gives us one zero, and then adding a one gives us one one. Going back to our original problem, we put a one here and add a carry here. Continue this pattern for all of the other digits, and we get our final answer. Now that you understand how to add numbers, we need to figure out how to create circuits that can do this automatically. Let's imagine two numbers as signals in these wires. Each of these wires can only have the value 0 or 1, and they will connect it to our adder to give the correct output. If you remember from a moment ago, one of the basic things we have to do at every step is just add up two digits. These binary digits are called bits for short, so we just need a component that can add two bits. As always, we can make a truth table with our output s for sum. The first three rows are obvious, but for a and b1, we want an output which is 2 bits wide for the carry. To do this, we use two outputs, C and S. The formula for C is just A and B. S is a bit more complicated, but you can easily find the formula, which is called XOR, or Exclusive OR for short. The component we have just created is called a half adder, which you can simplify with this rectangle. But this half adder isn't enough to add up numbers yet. You see, before when you're adding numbers, it might have been the case that we just didn't have to add 2 bits, but 3, 2 for the actual numbers, and 1 for the carry bit. The half adder we have now only takes in 2 inputs, so let's make a new adder one which takes in 3 inputs. As always, just make a truth table and fill in the columns. By simplifying this circuit, we can figure out that the correct formula for S and C out are these. This new adder we have created is in the old half adder but instead a full adder. Let's try to add some numbers with these adders. For our first two bits, we can just use a half adder since we can't have a carry bit for the first digit. For the next two bits, we need a full adder. Two inputs for the actual bits we're adding and one for a carry. Now comes the amazing part. We can just keep repeating this. Add another full adder for the next two bits and connect the C out to the C in here. Just as many full adders as you need for the size of your number. When you're done, just line up the S outputs, as well as the C out output, and check your binary answer. If you remember from our previous videos, we can even use a 7 second display to show this number in the decimal system. But there does exist a small problem in the real world when it comes to adding numbers. In the real world, we like having the size of numbers standardized to size such as 4, 8, 16, or maybe 32 bits, depending on the application. But let's say we add two 4-bit numbers together, such as these two here. Adding these with our adders would give us the correct answer of 10000. 0, 0, 0, 0. 
where our s's are all 0, where c out gives us a 1. But having a standard size of 4 bits means that we have to throw away this last carry and just get an answer of 0. This wrapping back of numbers to 0 is called overflow. You might think overflow is an unwanted consequence of having a finite amount of memory, but this is actually amazing. The number that you add to 1 to get 0 is minus 1, the inverse of 1. So if 1111 plus 1 equals 0, that means that 1111 is in fact minus 1. So let's say we want to do 5 minus 1, which should be 4. For the minus 1, we add 1111. We get a 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. But since we only have 4 bits, we ignore this leftmost 1 and we just get 0, 1, 0, 0, which is indeed 4. If we want to do subtraction, all we have to do is simply find the inverse. But how do you find the inverse of a binary number? If you have a number like 3 or 0, 0, 1, 1, if you just use 4 bits, to find the inverse, we have to find a number that when added gives 0. But let me propose to you an easier question. What number would we have to add to get 1111 or minus 1? Well, obviously, you just turn every 0 into 1 and vice versa. Or simply take a NOT gate for every bit. Then we simply add our final 1 to get minus 3, which is 1101. Let's try a bigger number to see what's going on with 8 bits this time. Let's say we want to find the number minus 117. That means that we have to solve the equation 117 plus a equals 0. Or in binary, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 plus a equals 0. This is a hard equation to solve, so instead of solving it, we subtract 1 from both sides to get an easier equation. But minus 1 is just all 1s, so let's call this a minus 1 term b. Then our equation is 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 plus b equals all 1s. Obviously, you just get b by inverting every bit, or in a circuit by using a NOT gate. Since b represents a minus 1, we just add 1 to get minus 117. As for our actual circuit, we just put NOT gates in front of the b terms, and we need to add 1. So let's replace our first half adder component with a full adder, and set a carry to 1. This has the effect of adding 1, just as we want it. This system we are using for representing negative numbers is called 2's complement. Here, if the last bit is a 1, the number is negative, and otherwise it's positive. Let's look at the numbers we can represent when we just have 4 bits. Of course we can represent the numbers 0 to 7, but then we have to go negative. As you know, 1 1 1 1 is minus 1. Then we can keep subtracting 1 from this number until we get to the number 1 0 0 0, which is minus 8. You might notice that the lowest number we can represent in this system is minus 2 raised to the power of n minus 1, where n is the amount of bits in the system. So here it's minus 2 raised to the power of 3, which is minus 8. This means that when converting a 2's complement number to decimal, we can use the same pattern of combining powers of 2, but this time we make the leftmost one negative. For example, this 8-bit number. We can turn it into decimal by adding these powers of 2 and subtracting this one to find that it's minus 23. This 2's complement system for representing negative numbers isn't the only system that exists. Another common system is signed binary, where the leftmost digit is a 1 if it represents a minus sign and a 0 if it's a plus sign. This system is simpler to think about, but it has the disadvantage of not having the simple addition and subtraction properties we had before. But let's now look at the new operation, multiplication. As before, let's first look at how multiplication is done in our normal decimal system. Let's say we multiply these two numbers together. We can expand each of these numbers out and then do this FOIL multiplication. As you can see, to do a multiplication, you have to do these smaller multiplications first by having memorized the correct value. Let's now try to do the same thing in binary. First, figure out how to do basic multiplications. 0 times 0 is 0, 1 times 0 and 0 times 1 equals 0, and finally 1 times 1 equals 1. If you put this in a truth table, you can see that what we're looking at right now is just an AND gate. Let's now try to multiply two longer numbers. To make it clear how to add each number, we can put them above each other like this. 
Now, it's pretty clear what we have to do. B0 is the small multiplication. B1 is the sum of these two multiplications. B2 is the sum of these three multiplications, meaning that we have to put two adders here this time. And we just continue this pattern for every bit. Let's now look at the case of multiplying two binary numbers with a size of n. As before, we put them in a table and line them up. To find the answer, we must have a size of 2n. For an output number, bi, we just look at all the terms of the column above it, by using AND gates for multiplication and adders for addition. Don't forget to connect the care of the previous column as well. We've already made a lot of progress so far, and can make some cool things as well. For example, with the previous information from the last video, we can make a counter now. We just use a register to store the current value, and we continuously add one to this. You might already see how this might be useful in applications, where it can act as a timer, or as a scoreboard, or as anything else. But we have yet to see the last operation, division. Click on this next video to figure out how computers divide.